Okay, we're live in Cornwall on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, thanks very much for Cornwall. I'm Scott Mills. I'm a Toronto police officer. We've had about a five-minute chat with about uh, 300 uh, kids here at a high school in, uh, in Cornwall. And we're going to talk about success and safety, and we may have some live demos and some fun like that. We're hoping to have an RCMP social media specialist come and join us here. And it's all about using social media for success and being safe while we're doing it. You guys okay with that? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, what's rule number one when we go out on the internet? What we say on the internet stays on the internet, right? How many people in this room right now of the 300 kids have a cell phone on them? Okay, I don't have the camera out to you guys, but I'm saying about half of you. How many don't have a cell phone? I'd say maybe, I'd say it's a third don't have a cell phone and two thirds do have a cell phone. Is that? You guys feeling okay with that? Okay, what's the rules in your school for having a cell phone? Are you supposed to have one? Put your hand up if you, yes, you're supposed to have one. Are you not supposed to have one? Put your hand up. Yep. <laughs> How many people are afraid that if they say that they have a cell phone on them that their teachers might get them in trouble and take their phone at this particular moment in time? Somebody's putting their hand up. Okay, for all the teachers, principals, school administrators here, nobody gets in trouble at this lecture, okay? Is everybody, is everybody good with that? Because we're going to have a real live discussion about what's real. Okay, how many people here have a Facebook account? Oh my goodness. How many people here don't have a Facebook account? All right, I think I'm seeing only about five hands that say they don't have a Facebook account. How many people have a Twitter account? I'm seeing about half. How many do not have a Twitter account? All right. How many people use text message to talk back and forth with their friends every day? Seeing a lot of hands out there. How many people have an Instagram account? How many people post pictures uh, every day on the Instagram? All right. How many have seen something on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or YouTube in relation to our school here that probably made somebody feel really bad? All right. I'm seeing, I'm probably seeing about a third of the hands uh, going up. How many people, the third of the hands that you put up, how many people did something about it? I'm seeing one guy put his hand up. One guy. And when I say did something about it, actually saw something that was kind of bad and went to the person because you knew them and said that probably wasn't a really nice thing to do. Could you maybe reconsider what you said? That's what I mean. I don't mean ratting out to the teachers. How many have actually gone to their friends and said, I don't think that was really good because that person's probably going to cry when they see that. How many people have done that? Yeah, a few are doing that. So the theme of what we're trying to, what I'm trying to talk here today is if you see something that's not so good for somebody, please do something about it. Okay? I don't know if you saw my inbox when I was logging in here. I think there's about 71,000 unread messages in my inbox. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know how many people um, reach out and say to me as a police officer on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, or Instagram, or something like that, and to some of my close to 300 colleagues now in Toronto Police that are trained on using social media? Do you know how many people a day reach out and say that they're seeing something that's making somebody feel so sad that they might even think of committing suicide? We're getting a lot of people that are giving that information to us. And we're not quite as police services set up to handle that yet. But I can tell you that I've received information that somebody was going to do something as bad as a school shooting. 
and actually, as a police officer, taken action to prevent it. And the police officers that went out there and actually did the work came back to me and said, if you didn't take that action, something really bad would have happened. So what, what did I say when I first started here about, you know, we were trying to find these two um, allegedly abducted children this morning? Can we do this by ourselves as police officers? No, we need your help. And that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you have to be a quote unquote rat and go to the teacher or go to the principal or go to the, the police or something like that. But if you maybe if you've got a friend and you see something, you're gonna see it first. Because could you potentially save somebody's life? You really could save somebody's life if you went and stepped up and did something. And, and just this morning, I read a story that in the town right near where I live, um, just north, it's in the same region of where I live, they've had two teenagers that actually killed themselves because they were being cyberbullied. How many people find that really unacceptable? Yeah? I find it really unacceptable. And like I said, we can't do this alone to stop it. So. All I'm saying is if you see something, if you can step up and, and do it. As well, here's a second really, really key point of uh, what we're trying to talk about today. Um, if you do post something really, really terrible or you're bugging somebody online and you're saying words that just aren't really seen in the real world getting jobs as being quote unquote professional, even when you're in high school, if you go on to be uh, to, to the job of your dreams, do you think that the employer can actually do a, a background check on you with all your social media posts? Yeah, do you think they do it? Yeah, they do it. Even when you're going, even when you've been in the workforce for a long time and you want to maybe become a chief executive officer of a company or something like that, when a company these days is going to hire a chief executive officer, they'll pay anywhere from $25,000 to $50,000 to an internet investigator to make sure that the person they're going to put into that role hasn't been a bully online even when they're in high school. Isn't that crazy? That, that seems like a lot of money, but for a major corporation, it's just, it's just like having a dimer, you know, 25 cents in your pocket. And they're willing to do that because their reputation of their company deserves that, right? So all I'm asking as, as a police officer and as a father and as a citizen here today is that if you see somebody posting inappropriate stuff out online, if you could just ask them politely or remind them that what they're saying could actually make somebody cry and could make them feel so bad that they do something totally, totally unthinkable and it could harm the person that's actually posting it because down the road they may be looked upon as being a bully when they're trying to get the job of their dreams. Is that, is that a fair enough message? Okay, that's the end of the serious part. You guys ready for some fun? Yeah? Okay, fun. Most of you said you had Facebook. So what I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to ask somebody if somebody wants to come up here and log into their Facebook. Does somebody want to do it? Yeah? Which one? There's always somebody pointing this way or this way or that way. Okay, I think I'm going to pick... Uh, how about this guy right here, or the, the one that put his hand up first? The first one I saw... Yeah, that guy with the green. You good with that? Okay. All right, there you go. Feel free to log in. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan. This is Ryan. Whoops. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> so Ryan's logging in. Owen. Owen's logging in. How many people in the room here are friends with Owen on Facebook? <laughs> All right, Owen, you can sit down. I won't embarrass you, I promise you. Uh, all right. 
So, did Owen think this morning, when he got up, that his Facebook was going live on YouTube at his school in front of the whole school? Probably not. Every single day, every single day, when you go on Facebook, remember this room, and remember the fact we're live on YouTube right now with Owen's Facebook, because depending on how you have your privacy settings, everybody can see everything. Okay? And most people have their privacy settings not so good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of scroll down. It's got, uh, looks like a... Po <laughs> oh my gosh. Who, who posted that? Did we just pull up something right away that is exactly what I'm talking about? Now, is the person in the room that posted that, are they in the room? Did that person that has that pulled up, did they think that this whole room was going to be seeing that? Could that affect them getting a job one day? They're on YouTube. It's a page, I know. I know it's a page, but let's say it's a person. If you keep going down, you're probably going to find a person. Okay, hey guys, have I made my point here? What you do and say online is out there. And if you go to get a job, somebody can potentially find that. So I guarantee you, Owen, when we're done this session, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about what's up there and we're going to change a few things up. However, we can learn from what Owen's got up here. And we can go into this little button at the top right, and we can click on account settings. This always changes on every social media site. So even myself that's a police officer that works on social media nearly every day, I have trouble keeping up with the different changes here. So just a little bit of a caveat. I'm not an expert, I'm just a user of social media like everybody else here, but I probably can show you a few things that you might not have known on privacy settings that you can actually make your site a little bit more private. Is, is that going to be helpful for you guys? All right, so Owen, username, uh, that's, we're actually going to go back in here. And we're going to go to privacy settings. Who can see my stuff? Who can see your posts? He's got it as friends only. Re review all your posts and things you're tagged in. Limit the audience for posts you've shared with. Who can look me up? Who can look you up using the email address or phone number that you provided? Do you want other search engines to link to your timeline? Right here, there's a really important thing here that says, on when I turn 18. Here's a really important question. How many people in the room, when they got their Facebook pay, uh, profile, lied about their birthday? Okay. I think we're seeing probably at least half of the people that have a Facebook account, they've said they've lied as their birthday. If you've made yourself older than 18, those do you want other search engines to link to your timeline? they're automatically on unless you turn them off. How many people knew that? How many people didn't know that? Okay, if you didn't know that, that means that when you post something, it's kind of going to go out into other search engines. Now, these things change and, and they've evolved. 
Um, but the bottom line is you need to go in and you need to set your privacy settings. So you go up here, who can see my stuff? Right there, you can actually make it so only you can see it. You can customize it. You can make it so certain friends can't see it. Or you can make it so everybody can see it. How many people have it set to friends only? How many people have it set open for the world to see? How many people, if you got kind of put on the spot right now, wouldn't know what you have it set to? Seeing a few hands up. So all I'm asking is that if you can go and check that. So as we go down here, who can look me up? We're going to go edit. Right now, everyone can look up Owen. Owen, do you want everyone to look you up? Or do you want it? Do you want to limit it so that friends of friends or friends can look you up? Friends of friends? Yeah, okay. I think that's a pretty wise choice because you're kind of limiting your 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 audience and, and you're you're pretty young. Alright. So This is how you block somebody. Now, if somebody is bugging you on Facebook, is just blocking them, is it going to solve the problem? It's probably a bigger issue. So by blocking them, you're not going to see them, but should you maybe seek some help to try and get the problem dealt with on a bigger scale? How many people say should, you should seek a little bit of help? I, I think you should, and I hope you would after seeing this today. Um, if you feel like, you know what, I don't even want to go to school in the morning, it's time to reach out for help. It could be from your friends, it could be from your parents, it could be from a relative, a neighbor. It could even be from a police officer. And at the end, if you want to become a friend with me, you're welcome to. But if you're going to block users, uh, this is where you got to go and do it. And there's lots of ways to do it. So your notifications. This is something that's really, really interesting. And um, it basically tells you who's posting what and where. And I really, really urge you to go into all these notifications. And if you're going to, to use mobile and have it connected to your email, monitor what's being said somewhere, okay? So these, these settings, they change all the time, and sometimes they're a little bit hard to deal with. Apps. You see all these apps that are on here on Owen's? How, how many people have gone on Facebook or any, any, anywhere on the uh, social media sites and they've downloaded an app? Okay, it'll say, All these, diff all these different apps, whenever you're going to download an app, it's really important to know if they're going to pull your personal information or not. So please go and check out all the different things that, uh, that you can do. See this security setting here? It says secure browsing is currently enabled. I would definitely have that on. Um, there's a security code here not required with logging in for an unknown computer. What that means is that Owen came up here and logged in on my computer. If somebody was being a fraud or making a spoof account about him or trying to log into his account and got his password for one reason or another, and they logged into another computer, if you don't have that on, which Owen doesn't have it on, you're not going to get a notification that somebody's trying to do that. So I would definitely turn those types of things on so that if you're coming from a different computer that you actually get a notification. What's the number one way that people get quote unquote hacked? Yep. Yeah, you tell somebody their password. And like I said, nobody's getting in trouble here. How many people here have told a friend, a brother, a sister, or somebody their password? Okay, that's the number one way that you get hacked. 
And as far as I'm concerned, the only person that you should tell your password to is a trusted adult in your life, like a mother or father or a guardian. And you guys might, if you got a good relationship, you guys are probably sitting there going, there's no way I'm ever telling my password to my parents. I want to tell you a quick little story about this. We're still looking for three missing kids that we've been looking for since I was a school officer way back in about uh, 2006. And I really firmly believe that if those kids had actually had their parents have their passwords and stuff for their internet site, we might have had a better chance to find them right away. So what I suggest to everybody is if you, if you do have somebody that you really trust, that you could actually seal up your passwords in, in an envelope and put them in a, in a place for safekeeping. In the event that you were to go missing or something like that, it's a really good thing that you can turn over to the police and, and, try, and, uh, and try and help find you. So that's just for a rainy day. So I would uh, definitely go in and do that. So enough about privacy settings. There is a document that I have that actually explains privacy settings and all the different changes. And what I'd like to do is, is share this. Uh, uh, whoops. It's not working. Oh, well. I will share it later for Owen. So it's a document where, you know how they always change settings? Anybody out there that actually finds a setting that everybody that's kind of following me along in social media, they find a setting, it's like, oh, this is really neat. I'd like to share it with people. They can actually add it onto this document. I'm just having the trouble bringing it up. So I'll share the link, and I'll share it with Owen if he'll allow me to become his friend. Owen, will you allow me to come, become your friend? Yeah? All right. So... Ah, okay. Guys, that's my, uh, that's my Facebook profile. I'm in uniform on it. Uh, that's my picture right there. There's no mistakes with any of the Toronto Police accounts that you see out there on Facebook. We're, we're not out there to trick you. We're out there to build relationships. On my banner profile, I actually have Carolyn Connolly on my banner, banner profile. And it all goes into the theme about what we're talking here. If, if we can all help out and not be afraid to help out a friend in need. Carolyn, on August the 2nd, 2008, in Sherburne Street and Seton Street in Toronto, was actually on the street and got in a fight with somebody. I, we don't, I don't know the exact circumstances of it. But I do know that she called for help and screamed for about five hours. And nobody called 911. Nobody submitted an, uh, an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers or anything like that. Nobody came to her help. And the next morning, when somebody was walking their dog, they found her dead body out there. Now, I want to tell you this story. It's a little bit sad, but a lady that was her cousin named Amber O'Hara, who was from the uh, native community and lived in Toronto, she reached out to a Facebook profile. Um, I just added, you just sent me a friend request there, sir. Um, this lady reached out to this Toronto Crime Stoppers Facebook account. Will you hit like on that, Owen? <laughs> He's putting his head down. Maybe not. This is a, called Toronto Crime Stoppers, and I started this years ago. There's a lot of people that follow the page. Amber reached out on this page and said, I've been leaving anonymous Crime Stoppers tips, and nobody's getting back to me. She was the first person that ever reached out to one of my Facebook pages or online social media presences as a police officer or as the Community Crime Stoppers program and kind of compromised their anonymity because they were posting something like that on there. So instead of kind of blocking her or something like that. She had a different name. She wasn't Amber O'Hara. She was Wabnong Kwe. 
She was Wabnon Quay on, on, on Facebook. And, and I actually removed her comment and I, and I sent her a message because I, we weren't friends and I couldn't, I couldn't uh, liaise with her. And I sent her a message and I told her why I had removed the post because Crime Stoppers is an anonymous program and if you're posting tips on an open public social media space, then you don't have the anonymity protection of the Supreme Court. Well, she wrote back to me and she says, I don't care about being anonymous. I just want to know who killed my cousin Carolyn. And I said to her, Amber, um, maybe we should meet because you're saying really nasty things. I'm not going to say what she said on the Facebook page, but it was definitely to the, to the tone of, you guys suck. So I reached out to her and we actually became friends. And unfortunately, Amber was dying of AIDS. She was also really, really interested in missing and murdered Native women, and she had computers with database and database information that she collected, and she was trying to solve and prevent these issues from happening to anybody anywhere. And we kept in contact, and we started working together. And one day, I got a call from somebody very near and dear to her saying that she died. And she said, you're one of eight people, Scott that are on a list that Amber wanted notified when she died. I'm like, wow, I'm honored. She said, she also wants you to have her computers. She wants you to do something with the data in these computers and mix it with the police, with her community work, and try and find some answers and prevent this from ever happening again. I said, wow, that's amazing. So I went to her funeral, and I just stood at the back. And you know, at the funeral, there's a place to go and sign your, uh, your name for uh, being a guest, and I walked up, and the ultimate good thing about social media happened there. She reached out and put something on the Facebook page that compromised her anonymity, said really derogatory things about the police. We reached out, ended up having a decent relationship, and when I went to sign the guest book, she had business cards that she'd made up sitting beside the uh, register. And it didn't say anonymously reach out and call Crime Stoppers to solve Carolyn's murder. It said, can you please call these two officers, Peter Code and Mike Barsky, if you have any information about who killed my, uh, my friend Carolyn. And then she reached out to another friend of mine that I had on Facebook who advocated for, for helping people that have been through tragedies and things like that. And she actually wrote out a statement called a victim impact statement. She gave it to this lady. And she said, I know that you'll stand up for me when I'm gone. And, and if they ever find Carolyn's killer, can you actually go to court and tell them how I felt? And my message, we got the online message here today about basically don't be stupid online. Don't say anything that's going to hurt somebody else or yourself. Those are the two messages. The third message is, you can make something better that's online. And, and I think that's proven right there. But more importantly, using these online tools, we probably could have saved Carolyn Connolly's life. How many people think that? Do you think if somebody had the trust to maybe call 911 that night or maybe even knew the number, that they might have done it? Do you think maybe if they, if they really needed to be anonymous and they knew how to submit tips, they could do that? So as I walked in today, I walked up to the school and I was really rushed and hurried when I was coming in. Everybody out there in the police world kind of knows me as graffiti BMX cop. That's me. These are kids. They're doing a, a, a mural in Toronto. That's a picture of it. It's called the Highway of Heroes mural, and it honors fallen soldiers that have died and their families. And it's right, it's right at the entrance to the coroner's office where people, uh, when the Highway of Heroes is bringing a soldier back from Afghanistan, or, and, and they, they come down the Highway of Heroes and they come in, that's where it is. And it's a, it's a picture of a dove and peace. And it's all these kids coming together, and we celebrate all this good stuff together. And I'm kind of known out there as graffiti BMX cop because I love doing this type of stuff. But I want you to know that even if you leave here and you're like, 
when I was setting up and I stepped on this thing, I heard somebody saying, yeah, that guy's a loser. I hear that stuff. I want you guys to think of the police, if you can, in a different way after you see this, that we're all human beings and that we really do care and we want to help. And being friends in real life and being friends in social media is a way to stay connected where we can actually find missing kids really fast. We can actually maybe prevent somebody from being hurt. And if you need to leave an anonymous tip on any of the Facebook pages, there's that little button right there. I'll go back to where it was. It's called leave a tip. And any of our Facebook pages have that little leave a tip button. And if you need to be anonymous about anything, even if it's a cyberbullying little issue, we'll try and network it to the right people that can come and help. Not drag somebody away in handcuffs to go to jail, but come and help. And all you got to do is click on that submit a tip, and it actually goes into a secure website, and your anonymity is protected by case law of the Supreme Court. So all you got to do is select your country, Canada, Ontario, I don't see any Cornwall one there, but... See where I hit the Toronto Airport? That right there, that information would go into the team of the lady that I hope is watching on our Hangout right now and they could actually do it. If it's an urgent matter, please don't submit it anonymously like this. Um, but you can submit anonymous tips. And if you think it's going to help save somebody's lives, I don't care if it's a little bullying thing online that's in the school, or it's somebody that's got a gun is going to do something terrible uh, to somebody, or whatever it is, let's just try and save lives together. So it doesn't look like uh, my friend Gene has made it on here, which is too bad, but what Gene did ask me to share with everybody was this link right here which is a youth resource center from the RCMP and there's police officers all across Canada that are trying to do similar stuff to what we're doing here and if Owen's cool with it I wouldn't mind if I could share it on his Facebook he's not cool with it let me see what I can do here about that let's go so all we gotta do is this Is Ryan here? Thanks, Ryan. So I got Ryan and Owen. There's a whole bunch of people here and one cop. And if Ryan and Owen are willing to go in front of everybody and say, I became friends with the cop, all I got to do is try and get these guys to go to this page. Graffiti BMX cop, it's easy to it's easy to uh, to remember. I gotta ask Owen. Owen Owen, are you okay hitting the like button on that page? Okay. This is the beauty of social media for a cop. Owen's okay with liking that page. He's not, he wants nothing to do with the crime stoppers. He doesn't want to do anything to do with the police one. But what I can do is I can post the information here 
that I want you guys to see. And I can actually add a picture on there of your school out front or anybody else that wants to get in the picture. And you guys just go there and everything that we've talked about I'll put on that picture including the Facebook settings document and then we can share them all. So in conclusion here, what are the key messages of what I'm trying to say here? Anybody? What's number one? The number one key message is don't be stupid online. Okay? If there's somebody that's saying something about somebody that's making that person sad and you know them, please reach out to them and tell them, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Just stand up. You don't have to go tell anybody. If you need to, do it, but just tell that person. Have it removed. If you're at a party on a Saturday night and somebody starts tweeting pictures or posting to Instagram pictures of people that are half naked, that's the time to stand up and say that's not right. Not Monday morning when you get to school, Saturday night at the party, don't let something little get big because it's not only going to hurt the person that it's posting, that's posting it, it's going to hurt the person that's in the picture and going forward it's going to hurt everybody involved that was involved with it potentially to get a job. So please think about your friends, please think about you, don't be stupid online. The other message is we can't do this as cops alone. I really want to thank um, the two uh, gentlemen that actually became my friends here. You got another one? Thank you. John Pack, there's a few more going. The next one. <laughs> I'd ask you if you can when you go home, how many people when they go home tonight will do me a favor go into anything they do on social media, click on the privacy button and go through what it says on the privacy settings and set their settings the way they want them. How many people will do that for me? Yeah? Please do that. Set your privacy settings. And I want to leave you with this. Not once did I turn that camera facing out to you guys. Okay, I don't want to do that. Not once would I stand up here and take a picture of all you guys and put it on the internet without having everybody's express permission. Because if you do it, can your face actually be indexed with what they call facial recognition? Even if you're not tagged on Facebook or Google Plus or anywhere like that, on a lot of the sites now there's facial recognition. And to the best of my knowledge, facial recognition doesn't work on Facebook in Canada yet, but it does in the United States. So if you have friends in the United States, it'll work on theirs. So you need to be aware of it. Google Plus, it works, and it's coming on more and more sites all the time. So if I were to reach out, take a picture, and post it, as you saw when we started here, I took a picture of your uh, school principal, or vice principal, and... I could have posted it right away, but did I? No, because I'm going to ask them. Right? These gentlemen back here that I asked to come up, we asked them. Did they want to? Yes. And it's a really, really, really important thing to remember that if you're going to take pictures of people and post it, make sure you ask them. All right. So what I will do, you guys, just to, before we leave, I am actually going to post something that I took outside. I'm going to post it on my Twitter. And what it is that I'm posting is a couple of bicycles out there, because I also do a lot of BMX stuff. And I noticed that there's two guys with BMX bikes out there, or girls. Love it. 
check out forever whoever said or girls uh, please check out Magnolia BMX Magnolia BMX she's a great lady and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna post a picture of those two bikes right from my smartphone and watch how quickly something goes right to the front page of the Toronto Police website from this phone all I'm gonna say is B M X BMX bikes in Cornwall. I've actually added it to a map. That's going to geo pinpoint me here. If you don't want to be geo pinpointed on some place, you got to make sure you go to your phones and turn that off. And on your social media sites that you have on there, you've got to turn off those geo pinpoint uh, settings. So it's really worth taking a look at them all. So I'm going to name this location, and we'll see on Foursquare if it comes up. So this is going to go to Instagram, Facebook, Foursquare, and Twitter, and the Toronto Police website, all at one shot. So this is CC CCVS, right? Just hang on, you guys. So it's going to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Foursquare with the BMX pictures. And if you guys are taking a look at that Toronto Police website right there, BMX Bikes in Cornwall at CCVS is right on the front page of the Toronto Police website right now. So that's how quickly communication can happen for the good. Please use it for the good, and I really thank you guys for your time, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> That's all good.